Good afternoon from Robert Service Garden. I'm very glad to welcome you again here. And this time to speak about my new book, The Anthology of Robert William Service Poetry. And it's entitled Robert Service Best Quotes and Inspiring Rhymes. A brand new book. I already talked about uh, this book, my wish behind and uh, what I wanted to, to bring with this new anthology of Robert Service. So I'm not going to repeat, but uh, I wanted uh, to present it in another way uh, by reading some parts of the book uh, in order to give you a little taste uh, of this anthology and perhaps the wish to know more and to, to read it. So I um, will be um, turning the pages and stopping uh, to some quotes and poems uh, and to give my my little idea and uh, and expertise on on the extracts. Let's start and well let's start with the very first extract that I have chosen and in fact it it started it's in the foreword that I've been written uh, a Robert Service a life penned in poetry and this first one is an excerpt from Ballads of a Bohemian the auction sale those who have imagination live in a land of enchantment which the eyes of others cannot see yet if it brings marvelous joy, it also brings exquisite pain. Who lives a hundred lives must die a hundred deaths. I think it's something very powerful and epitomizing very well this feeling, uh, this very high level of feeling that an artist might have and I think if Robert Service wrote it it's because he was sharing this little this thing this that increased so much uh, everything you can see you can feel lots of artists uh, have been also talking about this same kind of of feelings and yes if you are able to put into poetry uh, the, the simple things of life, like like the breeze, the, the breeze of the wind that I'm feeling now, and to make it a wonderful poem, imagine when it's pain, or when it's something sad, how the sorrow must be so overwhelming for an artist. So I, I found this this text from Robert Service um, is not used to talk a lot about his own feelings. He's kind of um, standing behind the rhymes, behind uh, all these thematics of nature, of freedom, but the things, the inner, his inner feelings inside is not talking much. So I think this one is revealing quite a lot of uh, Robert Service as a poet. Um, let's continue to turn some pages. Uh, of course, one uh, very famous extract is from Plowman of the Moon. It's the very, the incipit, the first uh, thing starting the book and it's Peddler of Dream Stuff Piping an empty tune Fisher of Shadows Plowman of the Moon Always this reference to the moon The moonlight, the moon, the night It's something you can find 
it's many, many Robert Service poems. It's really a component of his writing and same, showing how he, as an artist, is in harmony with the world around him. And I think it's showing how he can, he has uh, caught the universe and everything that is around us, like the moon. The moon is something uh, artists have painted, have thought about, and often they are very uh, yeah, sensitive to the night. So, as I already explained, this book, all those extracts and poems are um, gathered in thematics because I wanted to, to give a view of Robert Service's uh, writings for, uh, for a topic. And I find it interesting to see how, with several extracts, you can have a quite a, um, a, a deep understanding of his feelings and his, uh, his ideas about thematic like poetry, uh, nature, freedom, uh, the wanderlust, um, love also. So just turning the pages, starting with his poet's state of mind and something interesting uh, is except from an interview he gave to a Montreal witness in 1916 and he's saying I don't believe in pretty language and verbal facilities but in getting as close down as I can of the primal facts of life getting down to the bedrocks of things my ideas of writing are to write something that everyday workmen can read and approve. The man who, as a rule, fights shy of verse or rhyme. I prefer to write something that comes within the scope of his own experience and grips him with a sense of reality. It's saying all about Robert Service writing and this score value of depicting your feelings, my feelings, something universal, the f some things that we are, we can all experience and as simple, as easy as it can be for everyone to understand it and to make it own in fact. It was really wanted to get rid of all the little uh, things uh, which are not necessary. In his poetry, he tr always tried to go straight to the idea, straight to the powerful world, word that, has go that is going to describe all and give you a kind of it. never be obliged to sell yourself, to subordinate your mind to others, to mortgage even a fraction of your time. Absolutely and imperiously you must belong to yourself. It comes from why not grow young. It's showing well how Robert Service was um, a free spirit. He has always this little rebellious attitude uh, towards life, towards uh, towards people, and it shows how we should always uh, remind to to be 
to remain free to have our own ideas and not to be subordinated by, by other things. To keep our inner freedom, I would even say. Uh, yes, it shows how he was driven by freedom also. And, that, and this freedom in his uh, youth that has been driving him to to go forward to to travel to discover new countries and then to reach the Yukon without it it would have not been uh, it would have not became the famous poet he became so uh, yes you can see that within every extract you can you can feel and uh, and grab a bit of who Robert Service was. And all those poems uh, have been so important and so uh, useful to read when I wrote uh, my biographical novel because you can take details and then uh, make Robert Service as a character alive. Let's turn the page, some pages. Um, the dream part It seems as if I had never lived at all Just dreamed and played at living It's coming from Plumman of the Moon And uh, I think also the idea of a writer, of poet, this ability to dream, to to fantasize a lot, then for writing, to put into world all those, those dreams and fantasy, but also, as he's saying in another in a poem, dreams are best. He says that I just think that dreams are best just to sit and fancy things. Let life be a dream to you. How life is a dream and to keep it a dream. And I think it's important to, to keep this ability to dream and to unlight a bit life. Yes, dreams are best and are better than our everyday life, but we should continue to dream because it gives such a, a moment of, of happiness, a free happiness. We can all dream and we can all, uh, for a moment, uh, think of some things better or just to improve uh, everyday life with a bit of a pinch of dream. I dedicated the chapter to to love, and uh, I noticed that Robert Service I ca uh, has kind of mixed feelings between love and um, and uh, relationship. One of his very first poem, quite famous, is Unforgotten. He wrote it to. Um, to his first love, and I think it's something mm, most romantic poem you can have, speaking about uh, a young man alone in his garret and a young girl uh, in a field of lilies. And it starts, I know a garden where the lilies gleam, and one who lingers in the sunshine there. She's an white stone, lily far from fair, and oh, her eyes are even lit with dream. I know the garret, cold and dark and drear, and one who toes and toes with tireless pen, until his brave, sad eyes grow weary. Then he seeks the stars, 
pale, silent as a sea. And yeah, it's strange for desolate and dim. Between these two there rolls an ocean wide, yet he is in the garden by your side, and she is in the garret there with him. Mostly romantic. But it's something he brought uh, when he was um, almost reaching his 30s, so he was quite young and still very romantic. A few years later, he wrote something quite, quite funny. I would say it's uh, Scottish humour, but I'm going to read it. It's except from Harper of Even. Of course, every marriage is a compromise. And to make it successful, the female, the female must be a champion compromiser. She must learn to get her own way by letting the man have his. There is an art in handling the male brute, and lucky the wench who has it. I don't know if you agree or not with this quote, but I find it quite funny. And it's very still useful today, I guess, I think. Let's um, turn some pages and continue our little uh, taste of the book. Um, uh, perhaps um, his consideration, his opinions, uh, about faith. Uh, a short extract. Religion may be false or true. The churches may be wrong or right. But if there is beef, if the faith in you, it can be like a shining light. So Robert Service has quite an ambivalent uh, attitude towards religion and faith. He has been raised very religiously by his four aunts and who taught him um, religion. He was attending services every Sunday morning and uh, we have some, um, <laughs> some funny stories about, uh, about this. And so in growing up, he was a bit uh, rebellious against religion saying that he, can, he prefer to grow his own field of turnips than attend um, Sunday service. Uh, but I think that behind this he, he was uh, very uh, um, aware how the values of religion and how uh, faith can bring something very positive to when you have it. I think it's something that helps you every day. And in, an, in other poems, he's also uh, talking about how, um, uh, how religion can, can be um, uh, a tool of peace and and um, and in others, he's uh, quite is questioning about it. But at some point, for questioning so much, it is because some, it was religion was something um, a, um, a topic of great interest for him. But uh, yes. The one uh, and yes, uh, to complete is that in fact uh, he was um, his most his religion was natural. Uh, he felt that uh, something uh, divine is behind 
behind the trees, behind the sea, behind the world. And it was more well, uh, nature. He has a face in nature. This is the point. Uh, let's continue a bit. Uh, yes, this brings me to the other part is in praise of Mother Nature. And here he's saying, I only believe in nature. I feel very close to her. Everything with her is peace, happiness, stillness. This is his idea. And the idea to respect nature, to live in harmony and to respect it because it's part of us. And to respect also our little friends who are attending the video shooting. And they are very interested in poetry also. And as Robert says, wrote, I'm putting aside the, the nature and I'm going to, to the concern part, indeed. Uh, and there is a poem, Kittens. Indeed, Kittens? It was Minette or Angora Cat with deep contented purr, relaxed in rapture on a mat. Three kittens nuzzling her. With tenderness, the sun being kissed, a fur of silver grey, their eyes as an ecstatic mixed. In boundless bliss, she lay, and he is laying too. Even if it's not grey, it's black and cat, white, black and white, is um, lying in bliss, isn't it? So, yes, Robert Service was fond of animals and in another poem, uh, always with kind of Scottish humour, saying was, pigs are often preferable to some people. I can see poetry in a pig's tree and in those days of inhibition and complexes, a hog wallowing in the mire is a sight to restore sanity. I quite agree. And when you watch little kittens you feel very relaxed and and well and a poetry a book of poetry and kittens are best uh, so I, I was uh, in the part about uh, about nature and then yes nature um, I want to read it a poem because uh, I think it's something uh, that show how poetry lasts in time and how uh, it's timeless. The words written uh, one century ago are just as as powerful and has uh, as true for today. The poem is My Garden from Rhymes of a Roughneck. The world is sadly sick, they say, and plagued by woe and pain. But look how looms my garden gay, which blooms in golden rain with lyric music in the air of joy fulfilled in song I can't believe that anywhere is eight and all and wrong a paradise my garden is and there my day is spent I step myself in sunny bliss incredibly content feeling that I am truly part of peace so rapt and still 
there is not a care within my heart. How can the world be ill? I, though the land by sick the say, and naked into pain, my garden never was so gay, so innocent, so sane. My roses mock at misery, my trusses they in song, when only beauty I can see, how can the world be wrong? And it's a bit like what we are experiencing today. We are surrounded by one beautiful nature, beautiful garden. And sadly, the world is very is wrong and awful things happen with the virus and so many people in pain uh, and yes I find it very accurate and very it corresponds of today's or feelings it's bring me to another poem I wanted to absolutely to quote is the poem carry on from Rames of a Red Cross Man and it's a poem he wrote in this book published during the First World War and the book um, from his experience as a stretcher bearer and ambulance driver and this, I think it, we can find inspiration and find motivation, find courage in such poem it's very powerful, it's like a, a bit of a military song it's carry on, carry on things never were, were looming so black but show that you haven't a yellow streak and though you are unlucky, you are never weak carry on, carry on fight the good fight and true believe in your mission Greet life with a cheer. There's big work to do, and that's why you are here. Carry on, let the world be better for you. And at last, when you die, let this be your cry. Carry on. And I think we can do this carry on. Carry on with uh, all those struggles and. For that poetry can be so so of an help and I think you can find comfort and uh, encouragement in uh, poetry. Poetry and reading is still a free a free pleasure and uh, books can travel. You can still we can still read even if we cannot do much. It's something that remain uh, free for all and this is how I will be closing this afternoon reading of Robert Service uh, Best Course and Inspiring Rhymes just to continue to read, to dream and to carry on our life and try to do the best as we can at our level enjoyed this little time uh, perhaps I will invite you to another afternoon reading in Robert Service Garden I think there is something no no cats <laughs> I feel held shadow of cats everywhere <laughs> they are the spirits of of poetry and Robert Service <laughs> living in this garden so, wish you uh, a happy time, a good reading, and perhaps see you soon for another ta time and another taste of Robert's service.